It's July 2nd, so starting this month, the federal government will begin taking legal action against people it claims have not paid back COVID benefit payments that they received and didn't qualify for. Joining us this morning on how serious these situations could become is Dale Barrett. He's a founder and managing lawyer at Barrett Tax Law. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good, but I bet there's a lot of Canadians out there that are nervous about this repayment structure. So the CRA is claiming there's still nine and a half billion dollars outstanding in benefit program overpayments. Nine and a half billion. You work with people going through financial disputes with the government. So how common is this repayment issue in your experience? It's a very, very common issue. There's just, you know, if you divide nine and a half billion dollars by twenty thousand dollars or whatever people you know, have, have received an overpayment. That's a lot of people. Um, so we get, uh, we feel a lot of calls from people who don't know what to do and who have to, you know, pay the money back and who don't have the money. Uh, we hear about people who are out of the country who shouldn't have received the money, who will never come back and, and who are going to get away with it. But there are just so many people who this is uh, affecting. If, let me ask you this then, if because the number of people is so large and we know that there is a, <clears throat> a slowness in the, in the court process through all of this, is it possible that people could get away with not repaying it? Certainly, a lot of people have already gotten away with not repaying it. You know, I've, I've dealt with so many people who are out of the country, like I said, who, who will get away without paying it. Um, but there are a lot of people in the country who may get away without paying it. Um, you know, certainly those people uh, who, who can't afford to pay it can, uh, once they're assessed by the CRA, they can do a consumer proposal. They can do a bankruptcy. The, the, the government may never see those dollars. But Oof. I believe the vast majority of people who are gone after, who are pursued by the CRA, will eventually end up paying it. Yeah, uh, so my understanding is those legal warnings go out this month. And then what's the process for people after that? So once people receive a warning, they can, uh, they can go ahead and ask for another review of their situation. They can provide additional information to the CRA, ask for a second review of the, uh, of the matter. Um, that will go to generally someone who didn't look at the, uh, the file the first time around. They can, you know, the goalposts change. The, the, the rules for qualifying for the, uh, for the benefits change from time to time. So people have to prove that at the time they apply that they were qualified. So they can give all that additional information, request a second review, and uh, if they were correct, if their uh, if their proof uh, and, uh, and evidence holds up, then they won't have to repay it. Otherwise, the CRA will come back after the second review and say you still have to pay it. In which case, uh, the only recourse someone has besides paying or bankruptcy or, or leaving or dying is uh, is to go to a federal court for uh, for judicial review. And how can the CRA enforce this? The CRA has many means by which to enforce uh, outstanding uh, judgments or outstanding amounts that are owed. So they can freeze bank accounts, they can seize assets, uh, they can uh, garnish you wages, uh, they can put a lien on your home, uh, they can generally make your life, uh, life fairly miserable by, uh, by assigning a collector to your files who will, who will hound you day in and day out. Um, so they're very, very good at collecting. That's, that's one thing they're very, very good at. Yeah, well, they're very good at collecting the money, but there also seems to be, the government seems to be really good at handing out uh, money, $9.5 billion mm -hmm. uh, in misplaced payments is a, is a large amount. What does, what does that mean? How big of an issue is it that that sum of money is missing for the Canadian government and ultimately for all of us in the country who rely on that money? It's a, it's a massive issue, and, and they have to start going after all these little small fish who uh, owe ten and twenty thousand dollars, and they have to still go after all the big fish. You know, it takes it takes a lot of fish to keep the country going, um, but it's a, it's a big problem uh, that they that they have overpaid so much money. I don't think they vetted people properly during the uh, uh, the time when they were giving out the pandemic benefits. If you fill out the forms and and you seem to have qualified, you'd get your money, uh, and now it's coming down to uh, to the time where they have to try to get the money back, which is. Uh, you know, not so easy. They're, they're certainly good at it, but it's going to take a lot of resources to get those billions of dollars back. Yeah, I'd say it's worth the time and the money and the extra resources to get nine and a half billion dollars back in the coffers. Absolutely. All right. Dale Barrett, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.